Hello class, in this video I'll show you how to animate the dress and clothes use Uncloth in Maya, and how to export the animation to a FBX file and import the animation into Unity 3D for a game character. In previous lessons, we created this uh, female character and we animated her, however we didn't dress her. So I'll just pick her up and no. throw her away. And here let's pick up a light. And as you can see, for the end cloth animation, the dress is really detailed and polished. And I really like the wrinkle and the shading as the character moves. So now let's get started and uh, see how we can create this uh, detailed animation. As you may see in the previous tutorial, that character has a dress and I just hide it. So what we'll do for now is we'll attach the dress to our character's model using the uncloth. And we'll simulate the dress animation. And we'll bake the animation and import it to Unity 3D. So here if I select all by type all of the joints, as you can see, I have the animation here. So I'll have to just bring the first pose, the T-pose, at frame 1 and postpone these uh, frames. So you can just go back to your original files. As I said, we make the backup of the original files and we have the t-post here. And select all by type all joints. Hit S key to create a keyframe. And then hold on shift and select this keyframe and copy that keyframe. And another thing is important that make sure your join hierarchy and also the name convention is exactly the same as your final project file. This is the final project file and as you can see that the name convention and hierarchy is exactly the same. All right, so now I can select all by type, all joints, and I can extend the time range to 200 and grab all the keyframes from frame one, and then um, click on the center arrow, postpone all the keyframes to frame 20. So it'll start from frame 20 to about 206, and at frame one, right click and paste and paste the key from your copy earlier there we go so now you all have the T pose at frame 5 we can also paste the T pose from frame 0 to frame 5 you all keep the T pose alright so now let's move on to the dress select the dress and turn it on and then we'll start to ring our dress before we get started Go to the setting box and make sure the image format check on JPEG and uh, image size as uh, HD 1080. So later on we can preview it with a HD 1080 image. And go to the view. I recommend you turn on resolution gate. So when we do play plus render, we know what is in the frame. Click on top menu Maya. Go to preferences and go to setting here. Make sure the time is set as a 24 frame per second for the time slider here playback. As you know, if uh, we are creating animation just in Maya, we would like the playback speed to match with your frame rate, which is 24 frames per second. But since this is for uh, uncloth generation, so we'll switch to the play every frame to simulate better uncloth animation. And click on save. So now we'll select the cloth and we'll switch to FX Palo and go to uncloth and apply create uncloth. And then select the character's body, go to uncloth, and create a passive collider. So the collider, which is the body, it'll collide with the uncloth, which is the dress. And now we can test the play. You can also go to the tool menu, windows, play blast, open the setting box, and check on time slider, so it'll preview the animation on the time slider. And format, check on AV foundation, and H264. And scale set as one so it will render the full resolution. And make sure you save it to the right location and uh, click on Play Blast. So, this is how it looks. Now, the dress collide with the body, but it looks terrible. Let's select the t shirt and go to the attribute editor. Click on the third button here and go to a tab called Nucleus. Down below here, if you go to Scale Attribute, uh, you should have the space scale. So by default, this is one, 
what it means is, for example, here for each cell, it consider it as one meter, right? Uh, however, if we here we change it to 0.1, that means each cell is 0.1 meter. So it all give the cloth more realistic, right? You can also do 0.01 if you want more detail, but I don't want it to be too much, so I'll just keep it as 0.1. And then I switch it to uncloth shape, and here has the preset. By clicking on that, you can apply a material to the cloth. Here the material is not the color, uh, the texture, that material is the physics material. For example, you can give it a t-shirt, it'll be thicker. If you give it a silk, it'll be very light and very soft. So here I apply t-shirt, and if you choose blend 50, so it'll only have 50% of t-shirt physics to it. So here I'll do replace. So I'll use the entire t-shirt physics. Now let's select the dress, go back to Attribute Editor, and go to Uncloth Shape, and this time we'll go to Conditions. Okay, so by default the thickness is set as 0.3, that is the thickness of the uncloth. So if we make it a little bit thicker, about 0.4. Also for the stickiness, we want the cloth to be more sticky to the character's body, so we can increase this number, maybe about 0.5. And let's do another Play Blast. Now the dress is a little bit thicker, and the rear stick. However, I don't like uh, the jumpy thing around the shoulder, the waist, and around the butts here. So what we can do is we can select the vertices on those areas and attach those vertices to the character's mesh. We can select the dress and go to Edge Selection Mode and select the Edge Noob for each section. Okay, so select all of the edges on the top and make sure you also select this edge on the side so you don't miss the bottom one. Okay, and I can also select this one and here this one. And maybe here and here. Okay, so after you select all of these edges, hold on command. So you can go to vertices. So these will switch your selection from the edges to the vertices on, on them. Right, and then you can hold on shift and select the character's body and go to in constraint and point to surface, apply it. So this will constrain the points we selected to the, the character's body mesh. All right, so let's see if I play, as you can see that, it attached to the character's body. All right, so I'll do the same thing for another side. I select all the edges on the top of the shoulder and also here on the side edges. And hold on command and the right click to vertices. And then hold on shift and select the character's body. And go to end constraint and apply point to surface. Same thing for the waist. And now I'll do a play blast render. Now you can see that the top part of the dress it uh, stays still and uh, works well. However, the bottom part, because we don't have any constraint on it, and it just floats in the air when the character jumps. So we'll work on the bottom part a little bit in the later. Um, so select the dress and go back to Attribute Editor. And this time we'll go to the Dynamic Properties. Okay, and here's the stretch resistance. So basically what stretch resistance do is, if you put a higher value here, your dress will be less stretched when the character is moving. Okay, so here let's uh, uh, just put a value like uh, 50 and see how it works. Now we can see that there's a two main issue. The first one is the black color spot on the dress. So that is caused by the normal map, the shading. So we can temporarily disable the normal map because in my default lighting display, it doesn't display the shading correctly. And second problem is, as you can see, the arm collide with the dress, which is not what we want. We only want the body collide with the dress. So for the arm, we would like it to ignore the dress. So I'll go to the hypershade and find 
the address is material and open its property and go to the bump mapping and temporarily disable it. So I'll break connection. We'll add a normal map back later, you know, after we finish everything. Now let's work on the condition on the arm. Go to show and uh, hide the joints. And then select the body mesh. Go to uncloth. Go to paint vertex properties. And then collide strength. And open is to setting. So this is um, similar to the paint skin weight, right? The paint skin weight we have done earlier for ringing. However, here's a paint and cloth tool, and it shows the collide strength of the mesh. So right now the whole body is in white color, so we know that it has 100% influence. And we can use the color ramp. So blue is about like 5% influence, and here's about 9%. So here we'll use the value as a zero, and we'll use a replace, and then we can start the paint, right? And the blue color is is about like a five percent, and we'll have to paint it internally black, so it will be zero percent influence. So here's an easier way to do that. So we'll go to the vertex mode, and select the area that you would like to remove the influence. And then go back to Clyde String. Right? So with these vertices selected, and with the value set as zero, you can just flood. It'll remove the clinician influence from this area. We can do the same thing for the other arm. Go to vertex and select the area that we would like to remove the clinician. And then Clyde String. And here are flood. Okay, so now let's do another play blast and see how it looks. Now the arm doesn't interfere the dress, and the color of the dress display correctly. However, we can see that the bottom part of the dress is a bit uh, too loose, and especially after the jump, it kind of uh, ramped up. Here I'll select some of the edges on the side, and constrain with the body, as we have done before. And then hold on command and two vertices. And then hold on shift and select the character body. And we'll go to end constraint and point to surface. Okay, this will constrain this area. Same thing for the other side. We'll also create a constraint for the inner side of the dress. So select the curve's body and uh, hide it for now. Hide it temporarily. And here's it. So we have to go to the edge move here. And then select this edge and go to vertices. And here I would like to go to create and create a set. And we'll create a quick select set. And here we can see dress inner vertices. And click on OK, and we'll show the body mesh. So after you show the body mesh, go to the dress and the vertex mode. And as you can see that, you lose the selection of the vertices you selected earlier. However, you can go to tool menu, select, go to quick select set. And here's the quick selection we have created earlier. So if you just apply it, as you can see, we get the selected vertices back. And then we can select the body mesh and go to inconstraint and apply point to surface. So we got the inner side constraint. Then we'll also like the dress. Go to the attribute editor and this time we'll go to the new Kneels tab and let's go to its sober attributes. So here we would like to boost up the sub steps and clinician iterations. So what the sub step mean is by default is a three so that means when we use NCLOTH to analyze the animation at each keyframe, Maya will look for three options for next keyframe, how each vertex will go for next frame, right? So if we, uh, for example, put it as 20, when we use NCLOTH to simulate the animations, Maya will think about 20 different options for the second frame. Clinician iterations basically is the detail of the clinician, so I also boost it to 20 and then go to uncloth shape 
and here we can also change the color and by default here the clinician intuition is 4 and we can boost it to 10 now I'll give a uh, play plus render and see how it looks now we are getting very close the dress is realistic and uh, it worked properly and the only two issue is first we can see that in the beginning of the walk cycle at about 1 to 2 frames the hand will penetrate through the dress because the hand is getting too close to the thigh and we can just change the animation and move the hand a little bit further and it will solve the problem and the second thing is as you can see after the camera jump and landed and the dress is a snow knee to reset the position uh, however it get into the idle animation too fast so we can increase the gap between each um, animation cycle and that will solve the problem as we extended the gap between each animation cycle now the dress will reset its position at the beginning of each animation next step We'll bake the animation and we'll export the animation for Unity 3D. Let's select the character joints folder and uh, hide joints. And then let's double check the mesh. Since this animation will be exported to Unity 3D and I want to minimize the vertices and the joints so I can simply denote it. If this is just for animation in Maya, um, you can keep the interface of the dress and uh, keep the constraint is fine. All right, so here I'll denote it and also I'll denote the interface. Okay, so now our model will be one side face model and then go to vertex mode and select all vertex. Okay, make sure your timeline is at frame one. We'll create the joints based on all the vertex and we'll set a constraint. Okay, so here I got a script and we will click on that and it will create the joints for all the vertices. See, here's the vertices and it will create a joint on each vertex. So I'll put the download link for the script under the video. Alright, and to import the script, what you'll do is click on this button. Okay. And then go to File and Open Script. After you download the script, you can put it in the script folder and just select it and click on Open. Once you open it, you can go to the FX tab since this is for you know simulation. And then you can go to File and Save Script to Shelf. It will be added under the FX and scroll down on the bottom. You'll find it. All right, so apply the script and uh, it will create the joints based on the vertex. And here I'll show the mesh. And next step, select all of the joints you created on the dress. And then go to animation, go to key, and we'll apply big simulation. Go to the tool settings. And make sure for the hierarchy, check on selected joints, which is on the dress and bake the keyframe on the Snyder, Time Snyder, which will already set all the five animation cycles in this range. Right? And here's the basic setting. And then when you're done, just click on Bake. As you can see that the computer will analyze each frame. Once it's finished, it will create keyframes on every joint. All right? Now you can select the dress, and since we are done with the in cloth, we all we don't need the in cloth anymore. So select the dress and go to edit and denote by type. Denote is history. Alright, once you denote is history and select all the in cloth nodes and hit denote as well. Okay, now you can see that the dress uh, stays stable and we have transferred the end cloth animation to the joints. So here's one thing you need to be aware of is, let's see if I um, hide the joints. So now select the dress. As you can see that, I deleted the history. However, the inner side of the dress 
I deleted the face earlier, right? But now it appears again. So what happened is, so you select the dress and right click and make sure to check on shapes. And then you can see that in the shape loads, it has two meshes, right? So this is the uncloth mesh, which is the one we edited earlier, right? We didn't need the interface. And this is the original mesh. So how this happens is when you select your dress and apply the uncloth, it will hide the original shape and it will put a new shape, which is the uncloth shape. So we edited the uncloth shape and we didn't need the interface. However, uh, since the original shape is hidden, we didn't edit it. So now it pump up again. So what we'll do is just copy the name of the original shape and then denote it. And then select your uncloth shape and rename that. And that's it. So now we'll get our dress model clean and we can turn the joints back up. So next step is we will bind the joints with the dress mesh. So grab and select all the joints and then add the dress. Okay, and then go to ringing and go to skin and bind skin. Go to his uh, two setting. So here's the setting you will put into here. Make sure you check on select the joints and bind method as close this distance and then just click on bind skin. So now the joints will drive the code. Right. Then you can clean the keyframes between each animation cycle since those will not be used for animation. And uh, you can do play plus render to check each animation cycle to see if the clothes is in loop. For example here, the run cycle, the jump cycle, uh, the clothes works great, uh, they are in loop. However, the walk cycle and the idle cycle, the dress has some difference between the first keyframe and the last keyframe. So what I will do is before I bake the keyframe on the dress, I will select the character's joints and uh, for each animation cycle, I will duplicate it three times. For example, here the walk cycle. So I duplicate it three times. And then after I baked the keyframe on the dress, I will use the second uh, cycle because the first keyframe of the second cycle will connect it to the last keyframe of the first cycle, right? Same thing for the last frame of the second cycle, it will connect it to the beginning point of the third cycle, right? So by doing that, the first frame and the last frame of the cycle, it will be similar. So I'll extract the second cycle and use that for the animation. And as you can see here, for the wrong cycle, I did the same thing, right? And for the jump, first the jump, and I let it settle down for a little bit. And then the second cycle, and then wait for a second, and then third cycle, right? So I have some time to let the dress to reset the position, and then go to the second one, reset the position, third one. And then I'll just use the second cycle. And same thing for the idle. And for the attack, it's the same. So between each copy of the cycle, I put a gap to let the dress to settle down, right? And then I will go back to frame one and select the character dress and go to vertex and select all vertex, apply the script to, to create the joints and then bake keyframe of all the joints. Now you can see that all five animation clips, they are in loops. The first keyframe and the last keyframe, they are connected and then in a cycle. Then we'll punish our file before exporting. Um, so first you can put all the dress joint in a folder, character joint in one folder, and character mesh in another folder. So that will make our hierarchy a bit cleaner. And second, Remember earlier, we have uh, denoted the normal map of the dress, so now we can turn it on. And then apply, right? And then let's take a look of the animation. So this is the detail, the current detail. If you want to punish it to the next level, you can also go back to modeling and mesh and smooth. Right, so I smooth in one level, 
and this is how it looks before, and this is how it looks after. So it really depends on the objective you want to achieve. So if you smooth the model, definitely you will increase the vertices. It will slow down your game. So if you are just create a small demo game, or the main game is about this character and the dress, different clothes and the dress animations, and then yes, you can smooth the model, and uh, you can create as much detail as you can. However, if you're going to control the character in the game and play the animation in each function, in that case, you will keep the original mesh level, and it's totally enough. Finally, you can export your character. So we'll go to File, and Export All. We'll export it as FBX file. And if it doesn't show here in the file hierarchy, just go to Windows, Setting Preferences, Plugin Manager, and search FBX. And make sure the FBX plugin is checked on. And then refresh. Okay, so here file type as FBX. And then make sure you check on animation. And also for the FBX file format, um, I recommend to use FBX 2011. It's a very stable format. And put the file name here and export. Then you will have this uh, FBX file. And you can go to your Unity project folder and go to the models folder and just copy the file into the models folder. And also go to the texture folder, duplicate all the texture files into the texture folder. In Unity 3D, select the model and go to the animation tab and then go to the animation clips. By default you should only have take 01. So here you can add a animation cycle and then you can name it for example here 2 since I already created one. Clap range. Here for the start of the work cycle it start at 24 and it ends at 57, so just to put it here and click on loop time and click on apply. So for this step, a document like this will be really helpful. So I reference the Maya project and I write down the frame range of each animation cycle and pull, I put my notes here. When I come here, I can just copy the number here and apply. Alright, so after you apply, you can see that uh, the animation clip is already updated here. So we can go to the animation control and here for example I can just say create a animation controller and I can see just test and you can double click on this uh, animation controller and by default it give you the exit and entry stage. And you can go to the model and select the model again and inside of the model you should find the animation cycle you just create it and you can drop it in here. So make sure it entry here and then it exit here. And then you can go back to the scene, uh, select the model and bring the model into the scene. And uh, you can see that on this model it has a controller. Right now it is known and you can go to the animation controller you just create it, the test animation controller and drop it onto the model onto the controller tab. And now you can just play and you should see that the animation is applied to our character. I can grab a light uh, to check how it looks. It's really smooth as you can see that. Alright, that's the whole workflow of how to use Uncloth to animate the dress and the clothes and bake the keyframe and export the animation for Unity 3D.